What's up guys, we're going to be finishing up our LAMP stack install on Arch Linux. So we have Apache running, we have PHP running, we don't have MySQL running yet, that's what we're going to sort out in this video. So first of all, let's just see if we can find it in the package manager. I'm going to be installing MariaDB, which is an open source version of MySQL and is the default recommended option for Arch Linux. You can see it is technically already installed. We're just going to run through the command anyway. So we run sudo pacman hyphen s mariadb. Type in the password. And it's telling us that it's reinstalling since we had it already. Next thing we're going to do is check out that mariadb service. So let's run systemctl status mariadb. And we can see that although it's installed, the MySQL server is not running at the state. So we obviously need to enable and activate that. So first of all, we're going to run sudo systemctl enable MariaDB. So that will cause it to start on boot. And next we're going to run sudo systemctl start MariaDB because we want to start that service immediately. And you can see it didn't manage to start MariaDB. So we're just going to troubleshoot that right now. So if we run systemctl status MariaDB, we can get an idea on the error. Now it's basically telling us that certain types of MariaDB table don't exist. And that's because there's a command that we need to run to initiate those tables in MariaDB. So let's run that command now. And you can actually find this command on the Arch Linux wiki under MariaDB. So we're going to run MariaDB install DB. Now that's the command itself, but we're gonna provide some arguments to that. Firstly, we're going to specify a user as MySQL. We're going to set a base directory, which is going to be forward slash USR. And we're going to select a data directory, which is going to be forward slash far, forward slash lib, forward slash MySQL. Let's run that. Let's see what happens. Okay, permission denied. I guess that's because we need to run this as root. We're not root at the moment. So let's just tag a sudo onto the beginning of that. So that's failed. And I think it's due to the syntax. Let's see, we have a dash here instead of equal. So let's just tidy that up. So now we have some default tables that have been created and we have some default users as well. So it tells us two all privilege accounts were created. One is root at localhost, doesn't have a password. And the other is MySQL at localhost, which has no password. So we can now return to our earlier step, which is going to be sudo systemctl start MariaDB. Hopefully it won't error out this time. And if we just check the status of that, we can see that everything is up and running. Now, obviously we need a test to see whether MySQL is working on our server. So if we just head over to the directory where we serve our HTTP traffic from, which is forward slash far www.html, by default on Arch, it's forward slash HTTP forward slash SRV. We actually changed that in an earlier part of setting up this LAMP stack. And I've modified the index.php file here. Let's just vim into that and I'll show you what has happened there. So we have a really simple try and catch just to figure out whether MySQL is going to be working with PDO. Now we don't have to use PDO. We can in fact use MySQL I as well. There's some debate over which you should use, but in reality, it's just two different methods of achieving the same thing. We're going to be using PDO in this, which stands for PHP data objects. It's basically just a way of extracting data from the database and manipulating that data in an object oriented way. And inside the constructor function of that PDO object, you can see the first argument there is a string delimited by a semicolon. And first of all, we specify the server. So that's going to be localhost. And we also specify the database name, which is testdb. Then we have the username and password. So the username is going to be Zenshell and the password is just going to be password. Of course, none of this actually exists yet. We're going to have to set that up using MariaDB. Now, if that all works and the object is generated successfully without erroring out, then we're going to echo connected to the database to the page. However, if there is an exception, then we're going to echo connection failed to the page. We're also going to grab that exception and call the get message method just to echo out that exception to the page. So before we do that, we're gonna to have to 
create the actual tables and users first of all. So let's exit out of this file for now. The first thing we're going to do is try to connect to our MySQL server. So we're going to use the command MySQL dash U to specify user. We know that there's a root account, so let's try and log into that. And then dash P indicates we want to supply a password. So we'll use that, although we do know the password should be blank for the root account. So it says enter password. We're just going to press enter again to submit a blank password. And as you can see, we get an access denied and that's because we are not root. So it's not going to allow us to log in as root. So if we try the same thing again, sudo mysql dash u root p, submit a blank password. Actually, this is asking for the sudo password, first of all. And now it's asking for the password for mysql. And there we go, we've successfully connected to our MySQL database. Now at this point, we can use any valid MySQL commands. For example, we could type something like show databases and we can see the available databases. And we can also use a valid SQL command to create a new user. So let's do that right now. So the command we're going to use is create user. Next, we need the name of the user, which is going to be Zenshell. So that's in single quotes. We're then going to choose at and specify the server, which is going to be localhost. And then we're going to type identified by, and we're going to put in the password. Now we're just going to use password as the password for this. Might not be a great idea in practice. You'll probably want to pick something more secure, but this is actually the config that we wrote in our index.php file. So we know it wants to be this. Now, although that user now exists as a MySQL user, it doesn't actually have any access to any of the databases. It doesn't have any privileges at this stage. Now we know we're going to need a database called testdb. So we're going to create database and we're going to provide the name of the database we want to create. So it's going to be lowercase testdb. Now, if we were to type show databases, we should see that database appear as a newly created database. And we're going to want to use that database. So let's type the command use testdb. Make sure you end all of these with a semicolon or it's not a valid SQL command. And we can also run a simple SQL command to create a table. So let's create a table. Let's call it test underscore table. And we're just going to provide some input for that. So we'll specify that column one is going to be called ID. And we'll specify the data type which is going to be int, and we'll just end that table there. So now if we type show tables, we should be able to see that table, and we can use the command describe test table to see the structure of it. It's not a very interesting table. It just has ID, which is going to be type int, and it is nullable, so we don't have to provide a value for an entry in that table. So the basic goal here is now to give our Zenshell user access to that table. So we're going to use the command grant all privileges on and we're going to use a dot syntax here. So it's going to be testdb dot test underscore table two, and then we're going to provide the name of our user and also the location of our user, which is going to be localhost. So we've got Zenshell at localhost and we're going to finish with our semicolon there. Now you'll see in pretty much every guide that we need to use the command flush privileges at this stage. This doesn't actually appear to be the case. This is only if we make a manual update to the permissions table. But if we're using the grant all command, it seems that MySQL is already smart enough to update the permissions without needing us to type the flush privileges command. But you will see that in many guides on using MySQL and setting up the initial database and permissions. Now, if we exit out of here, we should in fact be able to connect to MySQL using our Zenshell user. So if we were to type MySQL user Zenshell password, and we now type in password, you can see that we've connected to MySQL or MariaDB using our newly created account. Now, if we use the command show databases, we don't get access to all of the databases. We only get access to the ones we have permission to access, including our test DB database. Now, if we check out our web server, we see that things are not working at this stage. So we get connection failed, which is what we were echoing out from our PHP script. And then we have the error message 
could not find driver. So what we need to understand here is that PDO is actually a PHP extension and it's not going to work without that extension enabled. So in order to enable that extension, we're going to CD into Etsy PHP. Let's check out that directory. And we have this php.ini file, which we're going to edit. So let's vim into that. And if we run a quick search for PDO, you can see we're at a section of the document where there are extensions and they've all been commented out aside from curl, which seems to be an active extension at this stage. And we're going to need to activate that MySQL extension. So all we need to do is actually remove the comment character for the relevant extension. So that's PDO MySQL activated. Now you may not want to use PDO. You may prefer to use something like MySQL I. So we'll activate both of those for now. We're going to write and quit that to the file. And the other thing we're going to need to do is to restart PHP FPM service. So if you saw in the previous parts of setting up this LAMP stack, we actually enabled the fast CGI process manager for PHP or PHP FPM. So we want to run a sudo systemctl restart php hyphen fpm. So once again, we're loading up index.php in our browser. This time we get a different message connected to the database. So that indicates that PHP PDO is up and running. We can create databases, run MySQL queries, etc., And we should also find that MySQLi works as well since we've enabled the extension for it in php.ini. So we're pretty much completely up and running with our LAMP stack. One thing that people like to do at this stage is to install some kind of front end to manage their MySQL databases. So something like PHP MyAdmin would be a logical next step here. Not everyone likes to manipulate their MySQL databases via the command line, although it is perfectly workable to do things that way. Thanks very much for watching guys. Hope you enjoy your lamp stack on Arch.